Hi, my name is Mike. Thanks for joining me today on my channel, Technically Church, where I share over 20 years of experience in audio, video, lighting, and multimedia. You can always find out more on my website at technicallychurch.com. Let's jump in. In this video, I'm gonna talk about using Waves plugins with the Behringer Wing using a couple of other components. We're gonna be using USB audio to get to a computer, and we're gonna be using Ableton Live to do the processing. So let me show you how this works. So I have my Behringer Wing plugged in via USB to the computer behind me, which is a Mac computer. On this computer, I have Ableton Live running. So some quick routing to get the audio over there. So if we go into routing, we go into outputs, and we go to USB audio. This gives you 48 channels of USB audio that you can go out of that USB port. So all you gotta do is patch the channels that you want to go over to that computer uh, in that USB output section. All right, so if we jump over to the computer, I'm in Ableton Live. A couple quick things to set up. So if you go into Live Preferences under the Audio tab, once your Behringer Wing is plugged into the Mac, uh, via a USB cable, you can set the audio input and output device to the wing 48 in, 48 out. So that is now using the USB channels as your ins and outs. And then you also have your input config and your output config, which you have to enable the channels that you want to use. You can see you have 1 through 48 available. You want to enable what you want to use in Ableton. They do this on purpose so that they're not all enabled for processing. Uh, to save you on CPU and memory. So you want to enable what you need for inputs and outputs there. So obviously if you're doing processing using waves, you need both ins and outs. So we're going to enable what we need there and in the outs. All right, so we'll close that. Now you're going to add as many audio tracks as you need. So you see I have several set up here. I've got my vocals one through six, and I've got a bass, kick, snare, uh, so on and so forth. So every channel that you want to come in, you just do some patching. So we say the audio comes in from external in, and then you pick, in this case, um, number one, and then you say, where do I want to send it out? So I'm going to send it back out, um, you know, maybe channel one as well, just to make it all match. In one, out one. So it's going to send it from the board into Ableton on channel one, and then you're going to send it back out, channel one USB, back into the board and you'll have access to that on the board as well. So while we're in Ableton, uh, before I jump back over to the board, I'm going to show you exactly what you do. So if you were to purchase Waves plugins and enable them, which is what I have done here, you can see under plugins, under VST, I have a bunch of the plugins I have purchased. So it's as simple as um, I have this Vocal Rider, for instance. You can drag this onto Vocal 1, and then you can see at the bottom uh, everything I have on that channel. So I have a plugin called Silk Vocals, I have an Auto Tune plugin, and now I have Vocal Rider. So it has opened the settings. I would set all my settings for that plugin for this channel, and then you could close it. So you can see again, I have those three here. You can turn them on and off with the yellow here. So that is coming in, processing through these three Waves plugins, and then sending back out to USB channel one. All right, so now if we jump back over to the board, you're gonna to wanna to patch this in to get that processing back on the board. So there's two ways to do this. You can do a direct patch. You can go to your channel that you want that vocal on. You can go to the input section, and you can change the input to USB audio channel one. So that would then patch all your processed vocals on channel one. Now the downside to this method, it is the easiest, uh, but any processing you do uh, using waves with this method would then send everywhere. For instance, it's gonna send that processing to the vocalist in-ears if you're using them. You may not want all that processing. Let's say you're doing reverb and delay using waves. You're likely not gonna wanna send that reverb and delay to their ears. Um, so option two would be to patch this in using an ex external effects rack. So if you go to the channel you want to use, uh, channel one, we're going to go to the external um, processor here, 
uh, one of your effects racks and you can choose this under effects type you can choose it to be external so what this is going to do is you set your return patch is USB 1 and let's get back to the settings perfect all right and we're going to want to turn that on so that's now going to say the input for this is actually USB 1 even though it can be patched here differently what that allows you to do now is set your tap point above that external effects rack and it'll allow you in front of house to have the effects but it won't send them to the vocalist in ears Thanks for joining me today. Again, my name is Mike. You can always find out more on my website, technicallychurch.com, or on my YouTube channel, Technically Church. Look forward to seeing you soon.